it was a little bit embarrassing to me. And I was trying to think of how to, you know, recover. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today, we're counting down our picks for the top 20 cringiest moments from RuPaul's Drag Race. I need you to fix that. Did she just call me the help? <sighs> For this list, we'll be looking at the most awkward and so bad they're good moments from RuPaul's Drag Race and All Stars. We will not be including untucked, snatch game, lip syncs, and runaway looks. Which of these moments had you gagged? Let us know in the comments. Number 20. Soju talking about her cyst, season 11. The Drag Race main stage is a place where queens are often overwhelmed with emotion, and this sometimes goes hand in hand with sharing difficult life experiences with the judges. Soju took this tradition to a different level in season 11 when she expanded on the medical issues that were impacting her performance. It's been a rough journey getting here. I got diagnosed with tendonitis, oh. and I have a cyst. After revealing a diagnosis of tendonitis, she began discussing a cyst in graphic detail. I'm currently oozing. Oh. And then it popped in the plane right here. So it's just been a messy week. Although the judges were sympathetic and her honesty was admirable, it was, shall we say, a lot to take in. It was an awkward moment, but Soju spun into a memorable lipstick goodbye message by referring to her fellow queens as her sisters. I love all of you. Sisters. sisters. Oh. Have fun. Oh no. <laughs> we miss you, sis. Number 19, Vivacious's Workroom Entrance, Season 6. Oh. Girl, what? An alien? We can all agree that Vivacious and her legendary companion Ornacia were gone too soon on Drag Race Season 6. Liza Minnelli lies. From coining Liza Minnelli lies to her club kid inspired looks, Vivacious brought a whole lot of personality to the main stage. But sadly, her workroom entrance is remembered as one of the worst of its kind. When she stomped through the doors with her iconic headpiece, the other queens were intrigued. Unfortunately, her flubbed attempt to reveal her real face resulted in several long moments of awkward encouragement from her competitors. Yes, mama. Come on. Reveals don't always go as planned on Drag Race, and this one was no exception. I'm vivacious. I'm 40 years old. Mother yeah. has arrived. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes, she yeah. Number 18, Roxy Andrews Roast Hosting. All Stars Season 2. Despite floundering a lot in All Stars 2, you have to give Roxy Andrews props for her perseverance. Yeah, I suck. I suck more than Michelle Visage at a truck stop with a, with a, with a glory hole, right? <laughs> her comedy chops, though, those we cannot excuse. Because I'm dying up here, ladies and gentlemen. No, I'm, I'm not the funniest. <laughs> you killed that one, sis. <laughs> for Revenge of the Queens, the contestants were asked to pair up and perform stand-up comedy in front of the judges and a live audience filled with the bitter faces of Drag Race past. Oh my God, Coquita, there you are. <laughs> How's everything out here on the strip tonight? Left without a partner, Roxy was given the job of hosting, a job that unfortunately proved too difficult for her. After tripping over her opening jokes, she decided to resurrect her Tasha Salad character from season five. It was funny for about a minute. They are so nutty. Besides walnuts, walnuts and almonds, these are my favorite nuts, ladies and gentlemen. Then all we got were embarrassingly cheesy salad puns. Do I look a little slimmer to you? Like I lost some weight? Do you want to know my secret? I started using light dressing. <laughs> Get it? We got it, girl. <laughs> Number 17, Bendel Creme's Self-Elimination, All-Stars Season 3. There's been four other times that I've been standing up here in this position deciding somebody's fate, and it is always a really difficult decision. By the time Episode 6 of All-Stars 3 rolled around, Bendel Creme was the clear frontrunner. With four top two placements and two twins under her belt, Dela's wit, comedy chops, and glamorous looks were serving her extremely well. It was all the more shocking then for her to quit the competition after her third lip sync win. After deciding that eliminated queen Morgan McMichael should return, Dela dropped the bomb that she'd be leaving to the surprise of everyone around her. This is the easiest choice that I have had to make this entire season. 
I'm going home. Explaining that she'd already accomplished what she'd set out to do, the perennial fan favorite left on a personal high, but some fans took issue with her holier-than-thou tone. I hope that you don't see this as a sign of disrespect because I see myself as such a drag race success story. I had such a difficult time on my season, even though I did well. I wanted this opportunity to come back, to fight hard, to show myself what I can do. In any case, it goes down as one of the show's most shockingly tense moments. Number 16, Derek Barry's Variety Show Impressions, All Stars Season 5. So here's a little rundown. Lady Bunny, you better make top two, otherwise you're just a bottom to two boyfriends. <laughs> Derek is well known for her spot-on Britney Spears impersonation. So when it came to prepare a talent segment for the premiere of All Stars 5, she decided to tackle a slew of celebrity impressions, including Celine Dion, Madonna, and Miley Cyrus. Miley, oh my god, my dad is gonna pitch a tent. The premise of the routine was advice Derek had received from famous friends, and although some of her voices were not half bad, her rapid-fire delivery left zero room for laughs. With a more thoughtful concept, a totally different rhythm, and simply more jokes, the routine might have succeeded. But the off-kilter performance landed the famous impersonator squarely in the bottom. Thank you guys so much! Have a good night! I want to like Derek's so badly. Number 15, Utica Queen's Mean Roast, Season 13. Drag Race is no stranger to a roast performance bombing because of overly mean jokes, like Naomi Small's takedown of Lady Bunny in All Stars 4. And it's really cute to me that Rue, you and Lady Bunny went to the same woodchuck to get your teeth done. But Utica's performance in Season 13's version of this often hilarious challenge takes the cake as the most brutally harsh. Nina West. Oh, yes! Oh! Oh, I'm sorry, I thought you could speak whale. <laughs> From comparing Ross Matthews to the Lion King's Pumbaa and speaking to Nina West in Whale, the routine came off as more rude than funny. And when she took aim at Lonnie Love's comedy chops, it resulted in a legendary clapback from the beloved talk show host. It's just as hard as to swallow as Lonnie Love's comedy career. Oh. <laughs> You're the one bombing! <laughs> Utica's roast did have its moments. Like when her demand that Rue stand up was met with a series of obscene gestures. Mirapal, you are such a fashion icon. If you could stand up for us, please. <laughs> but her no holds barred routine was undeniably overshadowed by the judges' own responses. Number 14, McBitch, Season 7. Macbeth is one of Shakespeare's most famous tragedies, so it's pretty fitting that McBitch is also considered to be one of drag races. First day of school, House of Capparis is gonna rule. Capulet. This reinterpretation of the Scottish play was performed by Kennedy Davenport's team in the season seven episode, Shakes Queer. The spirits. The spirits have spoken. We saw it in a dream. Lady McBitch is the neat cheer supreme. While Max managed to pull her team through their performance of Romeo and Juliet, Kennedy's team never seemed to get theirs off the ground at all. There was line fumbling, wooden acting, multiple missed cues, and Pearl seemingly struggling to not bump into the scenery. It was a domino effect. This person screwed up, and then this person screwed up, and then this person doesn't know what to do. It's a mess. A stunned Michelle and RuPaul could barely contain their horror. During rehearsals, Ru even described it as Drag Race's worst car crash in seven seasons. I don't know what to tell you, ladies. This is not good. Everybody on my team is in deep right now. Number 13, Chanel eliminates herself, season one. Talk about digging yourself a hole. One of the staple questions contestants on Drag Race are expected to answer is, which of your fellow contestants deserves to go home? Who should be eliminated tonight? Rebecca, what's your answer? Do we just get to pick one? This drama-stirring tradition began all the way back in season one, but to this day, no one has given quite such a shocking answer as Chanel. Chanel, who should be eliminated tonight? I'm so glad you asked me this question. 
I nominate myself because I don't want to be here anymore. By the sixth week in the competition, Chanel felt frustrated that her skill and beauty wasn't being rewarded enough by positive critiques or challenge wins. So when asked, she nominated herself to go home. I'm a beautiful person internally and on the outside. And it's so, so frustrating to me that that image does not seem to be conveyed. Week after week, when we come into an elimination round, I am so negatively critiqued. Chanel's diva moment became super awkward when she actually ended up in the bottom two alongside Rebecca Glasscock and was then eliminated. Chanel, even though your time here has come to an end, your contribution to the world of drag is undeniable. Thank you, Chanel. Number 12, Coco Montrese's talent show dance routine, All Stars season two. The stakes could not have been higher when the highly anticipated first episode of All Stars 2 dropped. The first category was All Star Talent Show Extravaganza, with all 10 returning queens expected to wow a live audience, the judges, and their fellow All Stars in a variety show style performance. The brief was to bring your best talent to the main stage. So when Coco Montrese, who is not known for her dance skills on the show, revealed that hers was going to be a dance routine, painted eyebrows were raised. We all make choices, but that was a choice. <laughs> Coco admitted she knew it was a risky choice. Embarrassingly, the risk didn't pay off. Though she looked the part, her vintage Hollywood number fell flat. <laughs> number 11, Laganja Estranja's stand-up routine, season six. Hey, 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 put your light Laganja's in the house, ew! Laganja's over-the-top personality definitely made for some iconic moments on Drag Race, but when faced with delivering a comedy performance, she stumbled hard. Unlike some of her other more successful competitors, Laganja didn't take into account her elderly audience and devoted most of her cannabis-infused set to her favorite plant. But it wasn't until I moved to Los Angeles that I discovered marijuana. I mean, I like to smoke. Y'all, I am just flying as high as your receding hairline, okay? And while poking fun at the crowd was a smart idea that helped others stand out, Laganja roasting them for their physical traits was less than wise. Her relentlessly upbeat personality amidst the disapproving crowd's booze made this one of the show's most painfully awkward outings and resulted in her elimination. Can I get an amen? Number 10, Jasmine Masters' talent show performance, All Stars Season 4. Hello, I'm Jasmine Masters, and I have something to say. Jasmine always has something to say, and she's been a beloved internet presence since her Drag Race debut on Season 7 but she struggled to translate her legendary online humor to the main stage in the All Stars 4 premiere when she debuted a downright shoddy stand-up show. I went on a date with this guy, and when he called me back for another one, I said, hell no. And he asked me why, I said, because baby, your breath smells exactly like your ass. While some queens are plagued by nerves in comedy challenges, Jasmine was perfectly at ease, but her potty-mouthed story about a bad date simply missed the mark. The routine may have been edited for length, but what we did get to see was one note and practically devoid of jokes. Where are the jokes? This thoroughly uncomfortable performance resulted in Jasmine's anticipated All-Stars run ending in the first episode. Number nine, Mariah Carey Diva Worship Challenge, season 11. Baby, we are praising Mariah. We're about to convert these sheep. It's no secret that Drag Race loves to pay homage to female music icons, but this season 11 challenge, which had the queens host an evangelical talk show dedicated to a legendary singer, did not do Mariah Carey justice. While the Britney Spears team was hilarious, the Mariah Carey group simply didn't know enough about her to carry the skit. They fumbled the name of her movie Glitter, and their conversation segment featured Plastique Tiara making a truly strange voice at the mention of Ariana Grande. Passed out in the sidewalk. Of an Ariana Grande. One last time fellowship. But perhaps the worst part of the challenge was Honey Davenport and Raja O'Hara's poorly rehearsed musical performance. We will tease out our hearts, she'll always be my baby. Rue was so disappointed that all six team members shockingly ended up lip syncing.
Number 8. Milk Talking Over Trixie in The Bitchler all Stars Season 3. Is this your house? <laughs> Jeffrey, Jeffrey, Jeff. In Season 3 of All Stars, fan favorite Trixie Mattel had a lot to prove, and even admitted to wanting to live up to her fame outside of Drag Race. It doesn't matter on Drag Race what you've done in the real world. In these four fake brick walls, you are garbage until proven otherwise. Meanwhile, Milk's overconfidence plagued her second outing on the show, with her backstage meltdown over being safe standing out as particularly cringeworthy. To be standing on that stage and not, not be commended for it. In this improv challenge that spoofed The Bachelor, Milk's attempts to upstage Trixie resulted in an irritatingly over the top riff on a stalker stereotype. Hold on, I have to take this. Yeah, I'm here now. <laughs> no, she's you, like a weird do, do forest I come across girl. as like crazy though? Oh. Like, do I look crazy? While the character could have been funny, Milk's attempt at non stop dialogue resulted in Trixie being interrupted numerous times. If steam could come off a wig, she would have those little lines above her hair where the heat is rising because this thing is hot. <sighs> From her obnoxious laugh to sniffing Jeffrey Boyer Chapman's hair, Milk pulled out one too many stops and made her co star visibly annoyed. Number 7. Jocelyn Fox Gets Too Personal with Cher's Mom, Season 6. Please welcome someone who has come out twice since coming out of Cher. From her kooky and convoluted intro line, Jocelyn's performance in this Drag Queens of Talk interview challenge was rocky. Her sit down with Georgia Holt and Chaz Bono came to a screeching halt as she matter of factly asked about Cher's mom's stance on abortion. Now, if it weren't for a last minute decision at the abortion clinic, the world wouldn't have known Cher. Uh, are you pro life? Has your stance changed at all throughout your lifetime? Ugh. While Jocelyn felt she'd nailed the challenge, her guests were visibly uncomfortable, and revealed to the cameras afterward that they'd been shocked by the line of questioning. Thankfully, Jocelyn got an opportunity to express her regret on the main stage, and Georgia accepted her apology. That will go down as one of my biggest mistakes I've ever made, because I just adore you, and it breaks my heart, and I will never forgive myself if I in any way offended you. But while it lasted, this was one of the most awkward moments the show had ever seen. Number 6. Fifi calling her competitors the help, season 4. In season 4's Frock the Vote challenge, the queens were tasked with developing a character and political platform for a mock debate. It's a challenge that has gone on to produce some scene-stealing moments, but this was not one of them. Fifi decided to play a racist and dim-witted politician and took things way too far. When asked by guest judge Dan Savage who she'd make her running mate, she had some derogatory words for Dita Ritz and Latrice Royale. Well, being in this time period, I think it's so great that the help can sit there and compete alongside with me. It was painfully unfunny and painfully offensive, but Latrice clapped back with remarks so brutal it had Chad Michaels breaking character. About five minutes ago, I looked across at Miss O'Hara Ooh. and realized that she was ugly. Ooh. And I'm at peace with that. Fifi evaded the bottom while Latrice had to lip sync, but if you ask us, it should have been the other way around. Number 5. Alaska's Meltdown – All Stars Season 2 The higher you get, the further you fall. In All Stars 2, former Season 5 contestant Alaska slayed the competition every week until the semi-final came along. Because this is All Stars, I think this was a bit lazy tonight, and I expect more. The challenge for the episode was for each queen to give a female member of their family a drag makeover, and then vogue the house down on the runway. Though confident she'd pulled off another win, the judges critiqued Alaska for not putting enough effort into Mother Hawaii's look. I f***ed up this week, man. I f***ed up. And it really sucks. It f really f sucks a lot. And I need to be in the final four. And now I now I'm potentially looking at I'm not go I'm not going to be. And it really f sucks. After finding herself at the bottom for the first time, Alaska threw what can best be described as a tantrum, even desperately offering a ten thousand dollar bribe to top two contestant detox to save her. Not a cute look. Well, I'll give you ten thousand dollars if you let me stay. Before taxes, I'll transfer it to you via PayPal because I need to stay in this competition. I need to be in the final four. Number 4. Do I Have Something on My Face? Season 7. 
There are two cardinal rules to follow when interacting with Mamaru on Drag Race. One, always make her laugh during Snatch Game. And two, never talk back to her. Now, you have a, a very big personality. Pearl, you do not have a very big personality. How are you gonna overcome that for this award? In the fifth episode of season seven, Rue dropped by to give Pearl and Max some advice while they prepared jokes for the Despy Awards challenge. Um, uh, I think that I have a great personality, actually. After Rue gave Pearl a note about working on her personality, Pearl took offense to the implication that she didn't have one. Well, I'm hoping it will light a fire under your ass. Rue attempted to clarify that her criticism was meant as encouragement, but Pearl argued it had the opposite effect, leading to this excruciating standoff between the two. So there's something on my face. No, I'm just not convinced. I'm just not convinced. And I want you to do well. That's why I brought your ass here. Number three. Roxy's verse in Read You, Wrote You, All Stars Season 2. I'm Roxy Andrews and I'm here to make it clear. I know you love me, baby. That's why you brought me here. This legendary performance marked the first finale challenge in which queens had to write and perform lyrics for a remix of a RuPaul song. Roxy Andrews had the unfortunate fate of following up Katya, Alaska, and Detox, who all nailed the song's sassy and sexy attitude. But your dad just calls me Katya. Her underwhelming opening line has since become a popular saying in the fandom, but that's about all this lackluster performance has to offer. When it came to the breakdown and her voice took on some oddly breathy distortion, it was clear that she wasn't taking home the win. I'm gonna show you what I can do. You're going crazy and into the number lives on as a Drag Race fan favorite, but its overall entertainment value didn't save Roxy from elimination. Number 2. Fifi O'Hara and Coco Montrese's Comedy Routine All Stars Season 2 Roxy Andrews wasn't the only one whose comedy routine failed to impress in All Stars 2. Fifi O'Hara and Coco Montrese were partnered up for the stand-up comedy challenge in Revenge of the Queens. But I have a little favor to ask of you. What you want, girl? Think you could do my makeup? Rather than stick to a conventional stand-up format, the pair chose to do more of a Saturday Night Live-esque character study, which Katya hilariously described as an... Coco and Fifi are not so much doing a comedy routine, but a live-action, off-off-off-off-Broadway theater production of Hookers at the Point. Though Coco's self-deprecating joke about using cheesy chips to do Fifi's makeup was worthy of a chuckle, the whole skit felt out of place and was very uncomfortable to watch. Jump in a car and jump out. <laughs> the cops are coming, put the hands on the oh, hood. Oh. To top it all off, Fifi also failed to leave the show gracefully by rejecting Alyssa's consolation hug. It's okay. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> oh, love you. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some dishonorable mentions. Britta's Spit Take, Season 12. This queen sprayed a bedridden Aiden Zane in Gay's Anatomy. I am trying not to lose focus, but it's definitely difficult because Britta can spit when she talks. Affectations. I said talk like a dog, Riff. Blair St. Clair, The Vixen, and Ms. Cracker's Drag Con Hair Panel, Season 10. The panelists were catty and ill-prepared in this bombed challenge. I am the Vixen, and I'm a wigaholic. You wouldn't know by looking at you. Oh. <laughs> I'm gonna get you She's later, dry. bitch. She's thirsty. She needs a little extra help. This is her moment. Willem narrowly avoids vomiting on the runway, season four. The fan favorite got sick minutes before her shocking disqualification. <laughs> Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Alexis Michelle and Pheromones Michelle Visage Roasts Season 9 in season 9, the remaining 8 queens were tasked with a daunting challenge to roast the most judgmental of all Drag Race judges, Michelle Visage. Instead of RuPaul, we are going to roast a man of true charisma, <laughs> uniqueness, nerve, and talent. Unfortunately, he was unavailable, so it's going to be Michelle Visage. While some queens struck comedy gold, 
Two of her teens were so rocky that we just couldn't pick between them. Despite coming off as a sweetheart, Pheromone decided to go for the jugular with some insult comedy. And I'm pretty sure having one song in the 90s that no one even remembers doesn't qualify you to be a judge on such a big TV show. <laughs> Good thing she's been sucking RuPaul's so long. Unfortunately, she forgot about the comedy part, and the audience forgot how to laugh. Expectations were higher for Alexis Michelle, whose visual gag concerning Michelle Visage's least favorite color, green, immediately flopped. In honor of your big night, I wore your favorite color, girl. <laughs> Um, Alexis only made matters worse when she later defended her choice to Tamar Braxton. My question the whole entire time is, why is she green? <laughs> well, Tamar, have you ever watched the show? Between that and the offensive slurs, it was nothing but crickets from the audience. Fortune, you also know about playing second fiddle. You've been playing bull to Chelsea Handler's alcoholic wasp for ages now. <laughs> Unsurprisingly, she and Farah both ended up lip syncing. The time has come. For you to lip sync for your life. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.